What is up? Rule of Two Army. We're back with another episode with Mark. Today we're going to talk about some interesting stuff. We've got a ton of different things we can discuss. Uh, we're going to take some questions from the fans. First, how are you doing, Mark? What's going on? I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm chilling. i um, pretty disappointed we didn't get the Mando 2 trailer yet. Uh, it was rumored that we were supposed to get it, and then it didn't happen. When do you think it's going to come out? Um, I mean... I'm like you. <laughs> I'm like you, man. I was watching those basketball games. You know, look, I love basketball, so it was fun to watch those games. But yeah. um, I was looking for that trailer, you know, the trailer that never showed up. Yeah. Uh, but it, look, it makes sense with all the DC fandom stuff that was going on over the weekend that they were holding off on that. Um, I don't know where this rumor even started that there was supposed to be a trailer. All over the place, man. That's what I saw. I was just like, oh, people are like, oh, my inside sources say that there's going to be a trailer. And there were like tons of them, all these articles being posted. I'm like, okay, well, if there's going to be a trailer, man, I want to be ready for it. Look, <laughs> you, were definitely, you were definitely ready for it. I was definitely know? ready for it, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then I LeBron, don't know that. LeBron, even during the game, he was like, let's watch some Star Wars. He did say that. Yeah, he so did what say the that. hell? Look, first of all, this just goes to show, man, that like unless it's coming right out of the horse's mouth, it's so hard these days to like figure out what's true and what's not true, man. Yeah. It's, it's insane. You know, like yeah. today, you know, look, I'm going to make a little confession to the rule of two army. Um, we got about 900 folks in the chat right now. So 900 of you are going to hear a confession. Just wait till it gets to a thousand. <laughs> well, I'm going to see the confession anyway. So All right. uh, theory and I spent about an hour and a half to two hours doing some intense research. I was calling my real contacts because we didn't even know whether there was going to be a Star Wars celebration online or not. You know, yeah. like people talk about that. Like, oh, there's going to be a Star Wars celebration online. Like, who said that? You know, yeah. like um, there, there is no Star Wars celebration online as far as we've been able to find out. It's never even been discussed. Um, there was an announcement two months ago that said that they were going to cancel celebration in Anaheim this year and move it to 2022. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, that is the only celebration that's, that's going to happen is in two years or a year and a half. My question is, so they had all this stuff planned, obviously all these vendors there. Uh, I know there's a huge Funko uh, fandom out there all this information for all the new star wars stuff that's going to be announced why is there no online celebration you know there was an online comic-con there's obviously the dc fandom what the hell's going on why don't we get all this information online at least look i think star wars has been very quiet kind of recently right that you know they they've given i mean they love to make announcements on directors there's like 32 directors that are directing Star Wars movies. Yeah. And they'd love to make casting like like teases, but we haven't really gotten a ton of big news. I, I think the only thing that I've heard about recently is that there was a new line of toys that was shown by Hasbro. Yeah. Um a, like yesterday on a live stream or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um so that's kind of like the only thing new that I've really heard officially coming out of Star Wars recently. Yeah. Yeah, there's new Palpatine lightsaber announced, which was pretty cool. And then it sold out, like, right away. And I think they're now back, but um, high demand for that, that's for sure. But that's the thing. It's like, if definitely if it's not from the horse's mouth, you can't believe it. And that's the thing with rumors. But the problem is we get nothing from the horse's mouth. So it's like, right. what do you get? The, the, the public are just going to be, you know, walking around like with chickens, like chickens with no heads. Like, what are we supposed to do? We're, at this point, there's probably going to be people making up Star Wars leaks just to satisfy themselves and be like, what's That's going exact, on, you know? Dude, a thousand percent, dude. That's what Star Wars is now. It's just like people just doing random announcements like, yeah. fine, hey, George Lucas is coming back to Star Wars. Yeah. Like, why not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, I had a meeting the other day with somebody that I know for a fact knows George Lucas and has worked with him in the past and knows him, like grew up with him, basically. And he asked me, he's like, hey, is it true that George Lucas is coming back to Star Wars? And I was like, dude, you're the one that should know. I mean, I have no idea. Like, he's like, oh, I've been hearing this rumor 
online that George Lucas is coming back to Star Wars. It's like it's a rumor. It's like yeah. Star Wars rumors have a life of their own. It's it's really strange. It's true, they do. Yeah, they're all uh, uh, Fugazi. 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 Whatever. Fugazi. Yeah, yeah. That Fugazi. Fugazi was the name of a band. Well, I'm right about something at least. <laughs> Fugazi. Uh, Wesley Snipes <laughs> says, "Give it apparently 11 days." See, there's another rumor right there. Apparently. Give it apparently 11 days until the trailer drops. I guess in September. Dude, <laughs> at this point, we could not get a trailer until the freaking show drops in October. It just randomly shows up on Disney+. Plus. That's how I feel like it's going to happen. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what gets me excited is, like, do we have an actual date for when the show's supposed to premiere? No, we don't. But I've heard, I've October. heard, I've heard October, too, yeah. I heard October 20th, but again, Fugazi. Fugazi. Fugazi, dude. Who knows? What's going on, chat? What's up with you guys? 1,200 of you here. How are you all doing? I'm going to bring up a little bit of the Star Wars news that I've been collecting, and we can go through it and chat about it, you know, sure, and yeah. see if there's anything uh, fun there. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Look, one big story that I know you covered on a live chat or a live stream not too long ago was this whole idea that uh, Kathleen Kennedy... Um, saying that Lucasfilm is going to, it's time to take a step back and think about where Star Wars is going. That To absorb that George to, Lucas Star Wars. That, to me, is the scariest thing I've ever heard about Star Wars, man. Like, it's like taking a, you know, it's like the, what kind of, in a world where the Star Wars fandom is looking for a confident direction and leadership for our beloved franchise. We don't have that. For, you know, for them to say, hey, we're going to take a step back so that we can absorb Star Wars. Yeah, they it's don't like, know They don't know what the hell they're doing, in my opinion. And you know what? For years, I was faithful, and I was, I was not faithful, I was hopeful. And, uh, yeah, the hope's gone. Oh, I see you there, Josh. My boy, Josh Lucas, coming in with the $10 donation. Thank you for that, Josh. Um yeah, so first of all, that's a great question. He's asking you both of your opinions. What the F was the point of that Kathy interview? I don't know what the point of that was other than to scare the hell out of me personally. I don't know how you took it, uh, Theory, and I'm, I'm, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But to me, it's almost like waving a white flag and saying, hey, we admit that we have no idea what we're going to do with this franchise. Yeah. So let So let me go back and go through the... 500 novels that have been written about Star Wars yeah. and all the comic books because I claim that there is no source uh, material uh, source material for Star Wars. But but know? hey, hold up. Now we're going to sit back. We're going to really absorb all the mythology. You know, there's 25,000 years of mythology here. It's like but, you know, a few months ago there's no source material. So where would this this 25,000 years of mythology just poof out of nowhere? Or was it all fugazi? <laughs> you know, I mean, what what are we what are we talking about? This is freaking Star Wars, man. Look, hand me over the keys. I guarantee you I will make you billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. Just hand me the keys. I know what to do with this company. I'm telling you. I know what to freaking right, do. Fine. As long as you let me do my Sith um, uh, movie that I've always wanted to do of my sort of Sith hunter, you know, who goes around, uh, you know, fucking uh, bounty hunter, my Sith bounty hunter. As long as you give me my oh, Sith yeah, bounty cool. hunter yeah, yeah, yeah. picture, yeah. you can go do yeah. whatever you want. And, and for all of you guys that are you like, you know, just saying like, oh, how could he say, how could he be so arrogant? It's like, look, any Star Wars fan could do a better job than what is happening right now. I guarantee you with the things that have been said about no source material, then there's 25,000 years of mythology. And then we're going to take a step <laughs> back to absorb George, what George Lucas has created. It's like, what? Why didn't you do this from the beginning? I don't understand. And it's like you're sitting on a, on this gold mine where by now, I mean, you've had Star Wars since what 2015 or 20 was it 2012? They've had it. I think 2013 is when they bought it. 2013, you had it for. Over I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure, but. I mean, by now, I would have had every single spinoff. Like oh, the, they're doing a fantastic job on the books. Why don't you just turn those into shows? Why don't you turn them into movies? Why don't you give us the actual titles of what these directors are going to be making this director that director this person that person this person's hired that person like i don't care dude just tell me what the title is like let me give know give me something give me a little something you know it's like look star wars 
I do believe that Kathleen Kennedy has one thing right, and I can't believe I'm even about to say this. Kathleen Kennedy has this, look, and I'm making an assumption here, but that she's got this vision that Star Wars can be for everybody, that there's something for everybody in Star Wars. Fair enough, sure. okay? Like, I, I can dig that. There's something for little kids. There's some things that skew male. There's some things that skew female. That's some things that skew older. Like, Star Wars can be for everybody. Good. Live up to that saying. Make Star Wars for everybody by giving us a variety of different things inside Star Wars that we can chew on. Not everything being completely in one lens. You know, it's like they always go too far to one side. Um, and, like, that's what the problem is when you stop thinking about Star Wars as a work of art and started looking at it exclusively as a money-making machine. Because the reason it's a money-making machine is when you uphold the values and the integrity of what the brand was built on. And then you just, you can make Star Wars toilet paper and it's gonna sell like hotcakes, you know? Yeah. But like now you put, you know, Kylo Ren's face on toilet paper and nobody wiping their ass with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I know what you, you mean, saw. exactly, 100%. <laughs> and that's the issue, is that they're that focusing on, on too many other things that just don't really make sense, whereas, okay, cool, if you have all these ideas and stuff, and you know, you got you really want to push Disney+, Plus, which I get it, it makes a lot of money, let's get real here, sure, character development can be explored far deeper in shows, but at the end of the day, you want that subscription, you want that new user in there, we get it. So give us stuff. Give us a Mace Windu backstory. Give us a Qui-Gon Obi-Wan backstory. Give us a Count Dooku Yoda backstory. All of these things, the Clone Wars. Give us more Clone Wars. Like, just bring it out. I mean, forgive me if I'm being impatient, but I mean, dude, why are you guys so quiet about it? Why are you so shy about everything? Just come out with it already. Like what? Okay, Celebration's canceled. Fine. At least put in the work. Put in the time like DC Fandom has done and, and Comic-Con and all these other things. Why are you so freaking quiet you're sitting on the world's biggest ip ever by far by far uh, my marvel fans my dc fans i love you guys but star wars is the biggest ip on the planet today and they're absolutely quiet and in my opinion they're just shitting the bed with their lack of content and the lack of foresight for the potential that this brand could really bring them yeah. I mean, look, I think if you want to just, just to kind of look, and we don't fact check here on, on Rule of Two that much, you know, but... We're just two fans, dude. Yeah. The MCU, as I understand it, is the biggest film franchise of all time. Great. You know, it's made, uh, you know, uh, I think it's well over $12 billion at this point. So it's by far the biggest. I actually think the second biggest is the Harry Potter franchise. Yeah. But... Star Wars is the most important franchise. Yep. That's the one that has, I think, the widest appeal. Yep. And that, I, and that, I, that appeal, because not everybody's into the MCU. Not everybody's into, like, superheroes, you know? No. no. There's, you know, there, Star Wars has bigger appeal, but they've done everything that they possibly can to create divisiveness inside of that Star Wars uh, fandom. But look, George Lucas kind of did that too, right? Like, unintentionally, I think. But George Lucas had a vision for Star Wars, and his prequels were met with a lot of hate. To the point, and I've heard you say this before, and I actually agree with you, that there was so much hate around his prequels that it kind of motivated him to get out of the Star Wars business. Yeah. You know? And that's a, you know, and that's a, that's a shame. Um, so now you have a group of people that are trying to, um, counteract that by giving what they think the people want. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of backfired against them. But now there seem to be going deeper into things. Now you have some data on your hands. You, you see that everybody loved the Mandalorian and you see that everybody loved the Clone Wars. Rogue One so, as well. Yeah. And Rogue One as well. But why do people love Rogue One so much? Let's face it. Vader. I think it's Vader. because of Vader. Yeah. yeah. So you have three valid data points. Let's go deeper into those data points. DC, you got to give it up for DC. 
the Joker was an absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant movie. So what are they doing? They're going deeper into that vibe, right? Like this new Batman trailer looks like it's from the same universe as the Joker movie, Give right? It's chills, got that. Man. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's got that same kind of vibe, and like they're learning from their successes. Yes, where where Star Wars doesn't seem to be learning from their success. They're going backwards. Yeah, that, and that's the thing that confuses me the most is like. You guys don't even need to make new movies. When you bought this company, you knew what was successful because you had 40 years of statistics. But now uh, it's like you, it's like you're 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 the alchemist in the lab. You're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. It's like you know what works. Well, like what do you what what more do you need? You have everything right, right. laid out in front of you. <laughs> like you don't need to hire anyone to give you stats. Like it's it's just and and. This isn't coming from a place where I want Star Wars to fail. I want Disney to fail. I want Lucasfilm to fail. I don't. The opposite. I, I the want opposite. them to, and, and this is the first time I swear on that, I want them to fucking win. I want Star Wars to rise to the top. I want all Star Wars fans to be like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah. But what we're getting right now isn't. And that's why I'm coming down hard on it because it's like, dude, what is this? Come on. We got so much under the belt here. Let's just use something. Let's just use something that we actually know is going to work, something exciting and something people really care about. And I don't feel like they really understand the heart of Star Wars at the end of the day. I think some people in there do, but the ones making the major decisions really don't. And they're trying to force this different Star Wars down our throat, and we're, we're, we're regurgitating it. We're puking it back out, and... It's like, oh, I'm sorry, but let's we're gonna give you more of this. Even Lucas, to his credit, like Lucas is a human being, and I'm sure that he was negatively affected by the Phantom Menace in a very deep psychological way. You know that Lucas that that had to hurt. I'm just making this up, but if I had to guess, Lucas must have had a few nights after Phantom Menace came out, where he was not being stubborn, like, oh, well, I don't give a crap if they don't like it, like, that he was probably taking some of that stuff to heart. Yeah. And you can tell because, let's face it, Jar Jar, you know Jar Jar was going to be a bigger part of Clone Wars. Oh, I'm sorry, of uh, Attack of the Clones. You know that he was going to be maybe a bigger part in Revenge of the Sith. And maybe Jar Jar did have an interesting arc yeah you know what i mean like yeah to, you know you've talked about jar jar what, what ahmed said yeah well ahmed best said on his live stream on instagram yeah yeah so there was definitely an arc to jar jar that we never got to see because lucas even though he didn't like it i think heard the or or, or reacted to the fan uh reaction on jar jar and made course corrections yeah. where I haven't seen a ton of course corrections from Star Wars. No, it's Other... it's 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 like they'll feed you the 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 it's like they'll feed you the crap and then you'll say this is this is crap and then they'll feed you more of it. It's like just can you change the formula please? Like can you give us something else? Yeah. Like course correct yeah. a little bit. Look, and I think and we've talked about this a little bit before, but I think I think Mando season two is going to be awesome. I think it's going and to kick ass. It's going to be amazing. I think it's I think it's going to be awesome, and I think that, especially because I think they're going deep into the Force. I really think that the Force is going to play three x a bigger role in season two than it did in season one. Yeah, and it's a it's a big part of season one. Yeah, you know, like like the Mandalorian is all about Baby Yoda. Let's let, let's just take you know let's just call a spade a spade. And Baby Yoda now is a year older, um, and he's you know him and Mandalorian. You don't need to set it up anymore. You have all this stuff. You're gonna get Baby Yoda doing Jedi things a lot, I think, in season two. And now with the introduction of Moff Gideon, I'm convinced that Moff Gideon is a Force user. Now with the announcement that Ahsoka Tano is gonna be in there. Um, now you're going to get even more force using. Um, so I can't wait for season two because it's going to, I think, not only remind the fans what we love about Star Wars, 
but it's going to remind the executives in charge of Star Wars, oh man, that's so successful. All this other stuff gets so much hate. Why don't we just go deeper into that vibe, you know? Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping for. I hope so. I hope we get that too, man. I mean, at the end of, of the day, I want them to make their money. I want them to make their millions and uh, their billions, sorry. I want them to succeed because I'm a Star Wars fan. And that's really where it lies. It doesn't there's no agenda. There is no I don't want this to fail or that to fail. I want them to do well. I want good stories and I want to be captivated by those stories just like I was when I was a little boy. And I feel like with Mando they've done that really well. I feel like with Rogue One they did that. And I'll even go as far as saying with The Force Awakens I was captivated. I was intrigued and I was I was extremely hyped for episode 8. Yeah. Yeah, look, we've talked about that to death here, but yeah, like Force Awakens was a very well executed movie. Absolutely. I just didn't I just didn't love where the story went, mm -hmm. you know, like I just didn't like it. Yeah. But it was a very well done piece of cinema, I yeah. think, you know, like yeah. the cinematography's gorgeous. I think the acting is top notch. Um, you know, like there's so much good stuff about The Force Awakens. I just didn't like the story. I just didn't think the story made sense. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a, it wasn't consistent with me. But you know, it was a good effort. Okay, it didn't work out. Fair enough. Yeah. Don't go deeper into it. Like don't, you know, Bill Clinton um, has a has a quote that I heard him say at, uh, years and years ago. If you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. Yeah. You know, and it's like instead of say, okay, we're in a hole, let's stop digging. They just keep digging further, but thank God that we have Mandalorian, because I think that that's going to illuminate and inform a lot of the future plan of Star Wars. And I'm so glad that we had season seven of uh, Clone Wars, because that gave us the Bad Batch, and I'm convinced that the Bad Batch is also going to go deep into the Force. I think so, and it's too, gonna, yeah. it's going to continue that tradition. Mark, uh, I need to... I need to fly to course on one sec. All right, there we go. We're on course on now. Oh, okay. We're in course on. Yeah, I had to change my background. All right, nice. <laughs> uh, All right, so, so anyway, um, if we keep going here through the news, hold on. Uh, where did my news tab go? Here we go. Um, so a uh, new Hasbro Star Wars fan first Friday product reveals. So um, there's a bunch of new Hasbro stuff. Um, there's a new Hondo figurine. That actually looks really cool, dude. I love Hondo as a character. That's cool. Yeah, there's a new Hondo figurine. Like you said, there's a new Sidious Saber. Um, is it by Mass? No, Force FX Elite. No, it's by Hasbro. So, I mean, it's it's, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the quality is. Um, there seems to be a new, uh, um, clone trooper, um, and a new shock trooper. I think the shock troopers actually look really damn cool. I always thought they looked pretty sick. Yeah, it's a Fallen Order shock trooper. That's cool. What do you think is going to happen with Fallen Order 2? What do you think they're um, going to go? Has it been announced? Yeah, yeah. Fallen Order 2 is happening. Well, sorry. I just got distracted. I'm looking at these toys. They're actually some cool-looking little figurines. Okay. While you do that, I'm going to read soups. Yeah. Mark, good to see you again. <coughs> and Bat Theory. I mean, General Theory. You both rock. Thanks, Charlie. Give it apparently 11 days. Gonk. Hey, dudes. What up, Wesley? The dark side of Twitter is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unfaithful. It's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. very true. Joshua and Pat, thank you. The STFU, because Disney is too busy pissing out the dumpster fire that Kathleen Kennedy's sequels. Is that why they're busy? Hey, what's up? You both are awesome, and Rule of Two is the best. Welcome back, Mark. Were you gone last week? Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah, yeah, you weren't here last week. You were, yeah. You guys like this guys background? Like Should we roll with this from now on? First of all, that looks dope, dude. I just saw it pop up on my screen. It looks cool. It looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I yeah, like it's in my office here. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's cool. It looks dope. I can, like, move it around, too. Wait. 
Hello there. Hello there, my little friend. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. I'm just playing around with the background now. Jesus, dude. All right, I should probably focus on the show. <laughs> hey, Theory, thanks for keeping my Star Wars vibe, man. You do great work. Anyways, which Vader appearance is better, Revenge of the Sith or Rogue One Vader? Uh, I think Rogue One Vader is a better appearance. Yeah. Did you notice how he turned off his uh, his his central unit on his chest so that it would be all dark for a dramatic entrance, which means that he turned off his air support? That's what I always found pretty interesting. It's like, like that's interesting. Like, I never thought about that before. Like Anakin, you just really want to show off, don't you? Hold on, but wait a minute. Yeah, because when it's in all in darkness, you don't see the light. You don't see anything. You don't hear his breathing. He's holding his breath. It's cool, hey? That's interesting. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, woo to Monday night. News theory segment. Absolutely, man. Glad you guys are all here. We got almost 1,700 of you. Do you think trying to push the trailer back to the first NFL game on September 10th? Oh, well, maybe. They always roll it on. They always roll trailers with the NFL. Uh, yeah. Monday Night Football is usually when they roll the trailers. But, like, nowadays, trailers are really all about the online. Yeah. So I can see them launching it during the NBA playoffs. I mean, it makes it made perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. I bought into the rumor but that rumor was started by, I don't know who, and everybody bought into it. I don't know. I don't know. But it's going to be, it's gonna people, be man. sick. And, then, uh, and I saw it, and I was just like, okay, well, I hope it is true. And it would make sense. I mean, once LeBron said that, I was like, all right, well, this is going to happen. And then they're all saying it got delayed because of technical issues or some, some crap, which I don't buy into, but whatever. Wesley says Kennedy is scrambling, scrambling to survive. I think she disregarded everyone's work and just nodded her head, pretending never actually putting in the effort towards the fandom. Just she just divided us and caused grief. Yeah, look, I mean, she's done a lot for the film industry in her career. And I think, you know, movies have been completely changed because of her and her expertise. But I think when it comes to running Lucasfilm I don't think she's done a very good job because for just even on the premise of her saying like oh there's no source material then you know a few months later saying there's 25,000 years of mythology it's like were you just lying in that report or do you actually believe that like what what is going on here and and something I don't like about the way Disney handles Lucasfilm is how they're so secretive with the trailer dates and this like I remember when Mark Hamill tweeted for for the last jedi trailer he's like he's like you should all watch monday night football blah 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 there might be something interesting i'm paraphrasing it was like two three years ago and they made him delete that tweet they got pissed at him for it mm -hmm. like why it's like why like do you want more eyes you, you guys understand how this stuff works like what do you like what the hell's like what's the big deal like the trailer's gonna come out you want people to watch it like i don't What's your competitors don't see? Like, you're Star Wars. You have no competitors. Your competitors are all below you. Like, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we're talking about the same Star Wars that, for Revenge of the Sith, released a video game that broke down the entire movie Dude, almost yeah. a month before the movie came out. Yeah. Yeah, explain that. People don't know that. Yeah, so for Revenge of the Sith, um, the video game, which I played through on my channel... And it's a beautiful game. It's actually a really, really good video game. Um, the game uh, basically is a retelling of the entire Revenge of the Sith story. And it came out a month before the movie came out. So a month before the movie came out, you can basically spoil the entire movie yeah. um, of Revenge of the Sith. And I'm not saying that that's the best way to do things, but that, that's kind of the different mentality that Star Wars had back then. Yeah. Which which is just about like about just doing the best possible piece of content that you could make. You know? And like look, whether you like the prequels or not, it's hard to argue with how effective George Lucas was and his marketing team at Lucasfilm 
about publishing and distributing these movies. You know, like they had a plan, they had a way of doing things, and they stuck to them. Right. You know, the it. it, it I don't know. It's like, look, the world has become a lot more reserved also than it was back then, I guess. This is just 10, this is just what, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's almost sad to see how much the world has changed in 15 years, you know, where the openness and the communication and the conversation was encouraged and celebrated and different opinions were encouraged and celebrated where now it's like if i don't agree with you i'm willing to like say insults that are horrific to somebody like you attack people for not agreeing with you um in such an extreme violent way that it's become a lot harder to say anything because there's this constant fear that if you don't agree with what's being said it could create this avalanche of of of, of you know of of like outrage of outrage and violence yeah. and verbal language, you know, violence. And, yeah. it's, and it's scary, you know? So I, I, I guess I kind of understand why the studios are so protective over everything because now you can't say anything without having an entire narrative written about it. Yeah. And it's almost impossible to go back and change that narrative to anything else. Yeah. So I don't know. No, I, I, I 100% agree. It, it's it's a baby world it's a baby world this this era and i just hope it goes back to the you know some things are really great and some things really aren't and what you yeah. just explained it's 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 bs man i just you know things weren't like this like i think i'm the last generation uh you know born in in the 90s that uh got to see at least you know maybe 20 years of the world being quote unquote normal and then now everyone's just triggered by anything. It's like I remember People... when I when I when I made my video about episode nine, which at the point I enjoyed because I had just gotten out of the theater and I it retconned everything from episode eight, which I absolutely felt devastated by. I remember people like sending me death threats and like and and rape threats and stuff to my to my family, and it's it, over what a movie, like it's just it's beyond me and i see this stuff on twitter twitter's the worst for it. i see it on all the time it's just so bizarre to me look and mike tyson i think has a great quote about this and it's like people are so willing to do that nowadays because mm. in the past typically you can only say those kind of things face to face yeah and it, and if you did you get punched in the face you get knocked you out know? yeah <laughs> you get knocked out <laughs> you know so it's like people have this incredible like freedom and liberty to be bad people. And it's like, it's a sad statement. I think when you realize that if you give people that much freedom, that they start leaning towards extreme dark, you know, like it's, yeah. Anyway, well, it's, it's just, it's just an outlet for them. I mean, they don't really have anything. I understand the internet is a place of, security in some cases unless you know the police get involved and track you down and all that stuff but in most cases it's like yeah you just type whatever you want right and back in the day it used to be forums like you know they used to call it the flame wars and like in a forum yeah like you know like you used to go to your forum and you yeah. hang out and you type something and then people would start flaming you yeah you know yeah, but yeah. it was contained it was contained to that highly special interest group forum right yeah, like man. you were in the in the star wars galaxies forums or whatever there was some great flame wars happening in there but it was contained yeah. now people think of twitter as an actual viable news service mm -hmm. you know which mm -hmm. is anyway it's a scary it's a scary world that i hope over time sort of tempers itself a little bit and becomes a little bit more balanced. It's not scary. It's just ridiculous. It's just yeah. laughable when you look at it because you're like, adults wouldn't act this way. But then you see like more than half the people that are posting these kind of things are adults. It's like, what went wrong? What happened? Yeah. And like, I mean, look, we're, we're down a rabbit hole here. Absolutely, but I even, but whatever. But, but like, I even see you post stuff 
you know, I follow you on Twitter, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're brothers, oh, and we, you know, we, yeah, you know, but like sometimes I'll see somebody to try to start a fight with you on Twitter only not because they believe in what they're saying, but because they just want that little endorphin kick in their brain of people engaging them. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, and that's a, that's not a healthy way, to, you know, to engage society. I think it's like the only way I can get attention is that if I slander somebody yeah. or if I, or, or, or if I call somebody like a bad name mm -hmm. or if I accuse somebody and their entire family of something bad, you know, it's just like, man, like, let, you know, let's, let's, let's remember we're talking about a movie. It's so like, I, I, I hear it. If we were political pundits and, and we're talking about politics, like I can hear people yeah. screaming at us, but like, I don't know the first thing about politics. No, you know? like, I that's don't follow the, that shit. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah. yeah. That's not my thing. We're talking about star Wars, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, as much as we both have our issues with Last Jedi and, 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 and I have issues with, you know, Rise of Skywalker and all that stuff. Well, I have issues with it now, too, as I said, that I enjoyed it when it came out because I was so enthralled by the retconning of 8. But when I sat on it for months, I realized, okay, am I just liking it because of what it did to the last one or do I really actually like it as a whole movie? And it's like, no, I, I, I have issues with the whole thing now. Right, but we, but we never, ever, ever talk bad about people or like say that their character is no good or that they're, you know, shills. Like I, I hear people calling you a shill and let me just say this for the record. Cause I know theory personally and I work, um, in this business and I know when people get paid to say things like I, you know, maybe you've done one, uh, hang out um, at Force Friday or whatever to see the new toys, or and I think maybe once you went to like. Are you kidding? I never got invited to that. <laughs> okay, so you've never even been invited to that. Like, you're the most anti shill guy that I know in this space, and that's why I do the podcast with you yeah. because, you know, so like even hearing that, it's just people throwing accusations. With no substance. Wow, well, they just want you know? clout. They just throw shit and they hope it sticks, you know, eventually. And but that's the thing is like I'll get maybe you know uh, five people call me a shill and then five people call me a Disney hater and saying I made up the whole copyright claim. It's like even though it's like right in front of you, it's like all this stuff is right. It's like <laughs> they're just I don't get it. I don't understand. But that's the internet. That's the way it is. I mean, I can't imagine what bigger. Um, channels get like PewDiePie and stuff like that. they probably have stuff thrown at them every second of every day because everyone wants a piece so I mean it's yeah. just it's just the name of the game man it's how it but is like, but like my point man is that we're talking about a fantasy sci-fi movie it's supposed to be fun that's yeah that's what we're talking about man mm -hmm. we're just trying to have a little bit of a good time mm -hmm. I agree and and you know the stuff that I've told you off screen that I haven't told any of the viewers ever with stuff that you know like disney behind the scenes what they've anyways you, you know all that stuff yeah. and it's like stuff i i don't want to talk about publicly at least not yet out of respect for the people involved you yeah know, not what... out of respect for disney uh, out of respect for the people involved in their careers and stuff like that but there are some very messed up twisted stories that if i did explain that to you guys in a video it would be oh my god it'd be pandemonium it would be absolute like People would be raging with pitchforks and, and torches, and it just... I don't want to do that. I saw what happened with the fan film. That was not even my intention. It was just to bring to the light uh, that I didn't put ads on this movie when I said that I wouldn't, and there were ads on it, so that's why I made that video. But it turned into a massive thing, which I thank everyone for. But there's so much more behind the scenes that if I explained, it would be too much drama, so I just don't. But yeah, I mean, when people say shill and stuff, it's just, it's funny because it's like, if anything, I'd love to be someone who just absolutely hates on them because of the things they've done um, to people I know and their careers and stuff just because of their involvement with me that uh, I just don't even, I don't want to go down that path because I'm just not a hateful person. Yeah. I just want to enjoy Star Wars. I want to like, nerd out and Star Wars to me is what I always loved as a kid, so that's where I want to keep the conversation. That's where I want to keep the channel. I don't want to keep it a, uh, 
uh, yeah, and, and, and like drama channel. That's what's fun about talking about Star Wars is just having fun with it and yeah. taking it for what it is. It's a fantasy uh, story that's a form of escapism. Yeah, you know, it's not it's not something to get personal about um, over somebody's opinion. No, you know? yeah, that's the thing. Anyways, what do you guys all think about that? I mean, going going forwards. I just want to see it succeed, and I want to see it do well, and I just want to have some fun. That's really it, you know? I don't see my channel focusing on the negatives uh, as much, but I will obviously bring all those things to the forefront if I feel that, you know, it comes up in the conversation like it did today. Which is the first time that I ever swore I dropped an F-bomb on the channel, so. Have to brag, the movie theater by my girlfriend's house is showing old movies, and I got to see Empire Strikes Back. And I'm like, you, you, all you bastards get to see the old movies. Oh, that's movies. awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. I don't even know if it's playing near me. But if it is, I want to go see it. Mark, did you, yeah, which one did you see in theaters? So the first one that I saw in theaters was Return of the Jedi. Okay. Return of the Jedi. And then I saw, I saw Phantom Menace opening day at 6 in the morning. I saw Attack of the Clones maybe a week after I had come out. Yeah. I was working at Rockstar Games at the time, and I took a lunch break. At Rockstar, we used to work like 24-7. So I took a lunch break one, one, uh, one day to go see it during lunch. Yeah. And um, I went to the premiere. Shout out to Mark Echo for inviting me. I went to the premiere of Revenge of the Sith. Um, I didn't know this. Was, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to the premiere of Revenge of the Sith. Um, Did you see George? In the um, crowd? So it was such a big premiere that I did not see George. Okay. I did not see George. Um, I went for The Force Awakens. The first time I saw it was with my nephews yeah. and my brother. Yeah. Um, I waited. I didn't go to the premiere. I, I waited uh, for that. And I uh, went with them. Um, Last Jedi, I did go to the premiere. Um, and Rise of Skywalker, I went to the premiere. So that's my Star Wars movie history in the theaters. What was it like seeing Revenge of the Sith at the premiere and knowing George Lucas was there? The first time so, anyone's going to ever see it. So I actually, it was in Santa Monica somewhere or some theater. Like it wasn't one of the big theaters. And um, I was so into hanging out outside and like chatting with Mara and just having a good time that they had like a blocked off section for people to sit and it wasn't assigned seating back then. And I got stuck seeing the movie in the first row. So I was watching the movie in the first row. And um, so that was a little bit whatever, but... I loved Revenge of the Sith from the opening frame to the closing frame the first time I watched it. The first time I watched Phantom Menace, I was like, uh, I don't know if that's exactly what I wanted. And like, I was a little bit on the fence about it. The first time I saw Attack of the Clones, I was like, I like this better than Phantom Menace. Um, but the first time I saw Revenge of the Sith, I was like, that's awesome. It was just like, I loved it from beginning to end. Yeah, it was a good movie. It was one of the best movies. Did you see? Well, when you were playing Revenge of the Sith, you remember those, um, like the game. You remember those alternate timelines where like Mace fights Anakin and Anakin oh, kills that's him. Oh, awesome! Yeah, awesome. Yeah, those are so cool. Do you think those were supposed to be in the script somewhere? I don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, the one thing that I've always talked about that we didn't get is Anakin actually fighting his way through the Jedi Temple. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the one scene that I wish we could have gotten. Yeah. And, like, I'd love to, like, you know, maybe that's going to be my fan film, you know? Like, yeah, I man. got some stuff, you know? Maybe that's my fan film. Is is I want to see, to me, my favorite scene in all of Star Wars is Anakin walking up to the Jedi Temple with the with the with with his clone troopers behind them. Yeah. I mean, I get chills. I just got chills just even thinking about it. Like. Yeah. That, to me, is the coolest scene in all of Star Wars. And it means so much to me, uh, and that's why I love season seven of Clone Wars, when you see how close Anakin 
is with his clone troopers. Yeah. You know, like th- that's his family. Like for some reason, like the clone troopers are his family. They're like, his he, boys. Yeah. Yeah. He takes care of them, you know? So that's why I think the bad batch is going to be so interesting if they go deeper into that. Like what happens to all of these clone troopers after he becomes Darth Vader? Yeah. You know, like is that relationship still there? Right. You know, um, so for me, between that moment and the moment where he kills the youngling, there's a span of time because it, it seems to me that the younglings are like the final room that he goes into. Yeah. After after he does all of this slaughtering. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the video game actually gives you a little taste of what happens between him walking up to the temple and um and him killing the younglings same with the and, book there's more info in there yeah what does the book say it's basically the same thing that he kills that one well he walks up yeah the, the one dude the gatekeeper did you get that too in the game in the game you you go in and you kill the library and i forget her name right now Joe Costa new oh yeah yeah her no but even before that, in the book uh, I forgot the gatekeeper's name, but he walks up. He's like, oh, Master Skywalker, is everything all right? And Anakin just plunges his saber through the dude's skull. <laughs> and there's just like his head's just like got this hole in it. And it's just smoking. And it's like, damn. Imagine if we saw that in the movie. And then he just storms inside the temple and just takes out everybody. I mean, dude, that's what we all wanted to see. You know, we never... I love seeing Anakin destroy the Separatists. Yeah. Um, and you're starting to sound like a Separatist. Um, but I that that to me is another one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. But it's so quick. And like none of those Separatists can really fight back. No. You know? Yeah. I want to see him fight a real adversary. You know, like a worthy yeah. adversary. Uh, not just it, Obi-Wan on like all this rough terrain where he's just, you know, half of it's fighting and the other half is keeping his balance. Yeah, because like you got him fighting Dooku, yeah, and you cool. got him, f- and you got him fighting Obi Wan. But you're right; that's basically the only real adversary that he ever really fought. Yeah, yeah. Seeing him fight Mace Windu would have been really good, but, um, you know, there was. Some, I don't know if you noticed this, and we've touched on it before, is uh, how when Palpatine's fighting Mace, um, <clears throat> in certain angles, it switches back. Palpatine's holding Anakin's lightsaber. And this is a blooper that they didn't realize and they left in the film because Anakin was originally, and this is from the making of the art of Revenge of the Sith, the making of Revenge of the Sith books, where Anakin was supposed to be standing with Palpatine when Mace storms his office with the other Jedi. And Palpatine's like, Anakin, please, like, I, I, I don't know how to defend. I can't defend myself. I don't have a lightsaber. And Anakin was supposed to throw his lightsaber to Palpatine. And he was supposed to stand there watching it all happen. Yeah. And... First of all, that is true, I think, because this is one of the coolest Easter eggs, I think, in, in, in any Star Wars movie. That scene where Palpatine confronts uh, Windu and fights him, there's a few frames of it where you can see Palpatine holding um, Anakin's lightsaber. Yeah. That's what I just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah they, 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 like, mix it up sometimes, but... I don't know, it would have been but, cool. But in, that, but in that one scene, though, you can still see the lightsaber in his hand. Yeah, I know. It's Annie's Revenge of the Sith saber. It's weird. I made a video on it, guys. Go check it out. It must have been just like a... Obviously, it's like a bug, you know? It, it, like it was no, not supposed to... A, apparently, they filmed that scene according to the book. Right, but like in the in the movie, though... I'm sorry, he, not according to the book. I assume that they filmed that scene because that was written in the original script for it and then they changed it. But in the movie he takes out his lightsaber. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then he fu- and then as he's jumping, I think it like like that's where you actually can see Anakin's lightsaber is when he's jumping or something. Yeah, you when it's just him and Mace left. Oh, really? Is that when it shows up? Yeah, when it's just him and Mace, he's jumping and then uh He's, it's almost near the window just before it breaks, and then you can see Annie's saber. Oh, no, no, this is, no, no, the, the saber that I've seen is in his office before he kills um, the other Jedi. I think you also see it when he kills, before he kills Agen Kolar and Sazy Tin and 
Kit Fisto. That's what you mean, right? Right. right. Yeah, I think yeah, he also yeah, yeah. does it there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a bug to me, like you know, they just, that they just they just left it in there. Ah, they okay. noops either. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I could see George doing that. Oh well. Yeah, that's all right. All yeah. right. Yeah, no one will notice. Then you get dipshits like me, Star Wars Theory coming in, like, there, yeah. there's a blooper here. It's like, no, man, but people have figured that out. It's all right. That's okay. It's not a big deal. But I still think the biggest blooper in all of Star Wars is Episode Eight with the Praetorian Guard losing the um, his second dagger just vanishing, the one that he could have just nicked Ray with. Wait. Say it again, say it again, because you I'm not familiar this? with this. No, no. Okay, so when Ray and Kylo are fighting the Praetorian guards, yeah. um, the Ray is fighting that when she gets that cut on her arm. I think so, yeah. Okay, and then he that Praetorian guard he's got two big daggers in his hand, and when she's locked in a duel with her lightsaber and one of the daggers, he's got the other arm free. He could just freaking stab her in the side of the stomach or at the back or wherever, and she'd be dead. But <laughs> he's not and then she drops the saber and then catches it with the other hand and kills him and it's, and it's not there like disappears it's the the dagger disappears it's like okay well uh, you know what after the show i'm gonna go check that out because yeah. i because because the yeah the, i hadn't the biggest I that one. plot destruction i've ever seen i didn't like that scene no, that I didn't like the whole fight. The whole fight was like there could have been so much more. Like, why is Ben not using the Force? Why is like, what the heck's going on here? Because I really liked everything leading up to that scene. Like, I I actually really liked that scene where she gets into that little escape pod, and Chewie throws her into like yeah. the big ship. Yeah, it was cool. Like I thought I thought all that stuff was really cool, man. And like, um, like I even liked the concept of them fighting together, even though. I hated how um, my boy, uh, uh, what's his name, dude? Um, Kylo? Snoke. No, oh. Snoke got done in. Like, <laughs> I would have loved, you know, like loved it more. Like Snoke just let the Praetorian guards fight, and then once they killed all the Praetorian guards, he just like froze them and just like, like, I don't know, disappeared or something. Well, I, you know, what, sh I don't what know. should have happened is that, yeah, like he would have just disappeared, would have gone to Luke Skywalker's uh, hut. Like he said he would. He's going to go to Skywalker's, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then. Yeah, that's a pretty good Snoke. Right. The first order! <laughs> Anyways, yeah, either that or Luke Skywalker shows up when Snoke is beating the crap out of them both. He sneaks onto his ship and he's like. Hey, Snoke, what's going on? Yeah, man. It's like, I don't know, dude. Like, you know, um, you know, kind of jumping around here. But to your point, it's like, what do we have to look forward to in Star Wars? I think a lot, you know, and I think uh, Mandalorian is going to be so awesome. And that's coming around the corner. We got a ton. Uh, it's just we were just not getting any announcements of anything. We're just getting people directing nameless, titleless projects. Yeah. And look, at, and we have a Cassian Andor show, right? I mean, I, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I told you, yeah. I told you to come to this. Yeah, yeah, I told you to come to this. They're making a show about Cassian Andor. <laughs> yeah. And and I know you don't like the Cassian Andor show. Look, believe me, I don't give two craps about Cassian Andor, but it is during the time of the Empire, so we're going to see lots of Vader. That's all I care about. Look, that's the one, to be honest with you, I like... I didn't really think about that as an upside to the Cassian Andor show mm -hmm. until you've really been talking that that's what you're looking forward to with that show. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if that's the case, that the Cassian Andor show is just another way to get more Vader content, then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all in. I'm yeah, all in it's on. another segue, man. It's just like, because Lord knows you can't have a Vader series by itself because that's quote unquote too much Vader. But you can have these segues of these different stories of these non-important characters that are somewhat vital to the main storyline um, during a time period where the big bad boys are in charge, which is cool. And the same thing yeah. with Mando season two. It's like, okay, I think Ahsoka's point of coming in there is she's going to direct Mando to where Yoda's family is. And 
in the end, I could see them doing a whole Force Awakens thing where Luke shows up again. Yeah. Going into this season is totally, three. This is totally off topic, but uh, did you see that Lego set that just got announced maybe like a, a few weeks ago or something, or maybe a week ago, of the um, the Empire Strikes Back scene of uh, Vader cutting off uh, Luke's arm? No. What? Yeah, there's a really cool Lego set that got announced. Um, it's basically like that scene of Luke yeah. saying, no, no. Yeah, it's like a whole Lego set oh, for that. Oh, wow, that's cool. so cool. Yeah, 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 it's cool. I want one. I want one too, man. I I, I like it. Here it is. Hold on, I'll send you. Uh... Are you texting yeah, it to me? Le yeah, Lego yeah. Star Wars reveals details about new Luke Darth Vader Bespin dual set. For the Empire Strikes Back 40th anniversary. That's pretty neat. It's the, yeah, Bespin Duel is the name of the set. Oh, wow, it looks beautiful, dude. Let me see if I can bring this up. I think this would be pretty cool. I'll try to bring it up on screen for you guys. I'm putting the link in the chat. I think I'm putting the link 50 in the chat. 50 bucks? That's it? But but you see what I'm talking about? Yeah yeah yeah. It's just it's a it's very it's a very simple. I thought it would be more elaborate, but it's very simple. That's cool. Yeah, it's simple, but it's dope. It is like, cool. Like, yeah. It's got like its own little stand and stuff like that. Like I don't know. Yeah, man. That's that sounds like a fun Friday night to just build that. Yeah, that's something I want to do more on the channel. Is just uh, build Lego on the live stream. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that. Is it for sale already? Um, coming soon, August twenty seventh. So, three days. Maybe we, you know. Maybe, maybe we, we could do something like a giveaway. You know, if like, yeah. you yeah. know, I'd like to do more stuff like that. Like, figure out some kind of fan engagement thing that we can do. Yeah. Um, where people like, gotta submit a one paragraph about how. Anakin storms the temple in their imagination or something fun like that. And then we pick the winner and we give them, Let you me, know, like a little. I'd be down for that. I'm also going to do lightsaber giveaways as well with the new Sidious one when it comes out and, and the Revan one, which looks cool. Um, let me pick your brain on something. I'm writing a fan fiction right now on um, what if Vader got the Death Star plans. And yep. it's pretty much done, but I want to get your take on it. And I want to get the fans takes on it, on it too. What do you guys think would happen? So at what point does he get the plans? Rogue One. So instead of instead of the guy losing escaping, them, yeah, he just force chokes all of them and just takes it. Which I there's a theory that I have. I believe he let them all go because uh, he wants the Death Star to fail because of how much he hated those technological weapons. So he gets the plans. Basically, he prevents the rebellion from getting the plans. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. Um, I think the rebellion would come up with another plan to get the plans. I think they'd try again. No, but there would be no more plan. Right? So Vader gets the plans. He'd be like, oh, crap. Galen Erso made a, a foil in the Death Star. There's, a, there's vulnerability there. So he would deliver it. I'm not going to give away the fan fiction here, but he would deliver it to the Emperor himself. Sure, but but Galen Erso's uh, implementation of Stardust, mm -hmm. um, is that what he called it, Stardust? Project Stardust. Yeah. It's still a secret to Vader, even if he stopped the Rebellion from getting the plants. No, but when they look at the blueprints of those files, those files showed the vulnerability of the Death Star plans. That's yeah, but that's only did. because Jin Urso told them, or or that's only because Urso told them where to look. They were hidden from the Empire. The Empire had seen those plans a million times. Mark, just let me make this fan fiction, all right? Just agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> but you get my point, though, right? I get your point, yeah. But, I mean, if they give it to Tarkin and the Emperor, I mean, they're going to be looking through those and be like, okay, look, there's probably so many millions of flaws here. Let's find something. And they would find it. So, more... I think more accurate to the story would be, let's say that he grabs the guy who had the plans that was getting away with it, yeah. 
and he successfully interrogates him yeah. so he knows what it is that they were looking for in the plans. Right. Because that bit of information is important. And Vader never got that bit of information. Okay, I like, like that. Oh, I like that. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I like that. All right, fine. But I don't. But I don't think that guy knew anything. I don't think that guy knew anything about Stardust or anything of the guy. He was just because, like, like, if Vader knew the vulnerability of the Death Star that Urso hid into the Death Star, when Luke gets into the trench run, he would shoot his two little things yeah. in the gopher hole, yeah. and it would. Not, and it would do nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool because then, really, the only possibility for them to for the rebels to win would be to <coughs> kill Vader and the Emperor, which is only through Luke or Leia. Right. Right. Because then the Death Star becomes kind of invulnerable. Mm -hmm. It becomes the technological monstrosity yeah. that they originally wanted. Yeah. But what was the vulnerability with the second one? It just wasn't finished yet? No, it just wasn't done yet. It and was the shields. It was the, it was the fact that they didn't have shields. Well, they did. It was on Endor. Right, right, right. It was on Endor, but they knocked out the shields. Yeah. And they were able to... Uh... Get in there. Oh, I assure you, we're quite <laughs> safe. <laughs> we're quite safe. That's the best. Friend. He's seriously, <laughs> dude, dude, he was the original troll. I swear to God. Ian McDermott Palpatine was the original troll. Oh, I'm afraid that the flakeless <laughs> shield will be quite operational when your friends yeah, are right. He's like right. looking all like sad. You know what blew my mind? You posted something the other day that really blew my mind that Ian McDermott was 38 years old yeah, when man. he played Palpatine. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. I still think Ian McDermott should have walked away with an Oscar for Revenge of the Sith. But, 100%, yeah. You know? I don't know why he didn't. Whoever's running those... Don't who cares? don't at me. Don't at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, who cares? Who cares what those guys say? Ian McDermott's the real MVP in all our hearts, right, guys? Yeah. All right, so we're at 60 minutes. Should we finish the Super Chats? Oh, yeah, and, we are. Uh, we are at 60 minutes. Wow, time. this one flew by, man. Yeah, it was fun. Um, just wanted to let you know why I'm looking forward to Cassian Andor series. It's a spy show set in the Star Wars universe during the time of the Empire. It, espionages and Star Wars, that's going to be awesome, period. Yeah, I agree, Liv. I'm down with that. I think it's yeah, going to be and fun. Look, and Diego Luna is a great actor. He is. You know, he's, a great, he's a great actor. Yeah, and we got K2SO in there. Disney can't handle the heat. They're making movies and think just because it's using Star Wars title, fans are instantly going to love it. Yeah, that's definitely not the case. Uh, say, say that one more time. Disney, he basically says Disney thinks that they can stamp Star Wars logo on anything and it'll sell. Yeah, they're almost right about that, but they have to make good movies for that to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Chris Russell, what up, dude? How you been? Wesley says, Ventress and Quinlan Boss, FFS, like so much to expand on. Well, we even got, uh, what is it, Daniel Logan said that they shot some, they recorded some extra episodes for the Clone Wars that never got released. So, <laughs> there's tons of stuff that we haven't gotten that, that yeah, I mean, it's not like they're short on content. It's like, hmm, what do we do? It's like, there's yeah, tons of stuff. I'm, Just put Dave I mean, Filoni in charge, John Favreau in charge, and we're going to have, they'll have their billions and we'll have our great shows, you know? Look, and I've said it on this show before, Asajj Ventress might be like my top five favorite Star Wars characters. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm dying to see more content around Asajj because she's a night sister. And the night sisters on Dathomir are some of the most interesting characters that Star Wars has ever talked about. Yeah. Like they're witches. Like, I mean, how cool would it be if you know if they want to do a female centric show, which I know that they announced earlier this year. I'm not sure what show it is, but they did literally announce a show and they labeled it a female centric show. I mean, I'm not making that up, right? Like they actually announced it that way. Um, give us an Asajj Ventress show, man. Like, yeah. you know, a Night Sisters show. Like there's, there's so much content around the Night Sisters. The Night Sisters basically held um, the, um, 
Oh god, what's the name of that species Zabrax. of uh Yeah, yeah. They basically had Zabrax as like puppets, mm -hmm. you know? Like they basically controlled the Zabrax, yeah. you know? Like there's some very interesting stuff there, but because it's on the dark side, because it's force sensitive, they're probably we'll probably never get an Asajj series. It seems like they're they're <laughs> taking the force yeah. out of Star Wars. They just don't they don't even want to touch it. Yeah, Tantive Four is right. Like all they did to Asajj was killer. Yeah. Like, I I refuse to read that book or even know the story of it, but there's supposedly a book that came out as part of the new canon where Asajj dies, right? Yeah, Dooku killed her by accident. He was trying to kill Quinlan Voss, and she jumped in between. Oh God. Yeah. Well, because her and Quinlan Voss started getting a little date, a little freak on. Yeah, they started getting a little uh, romantic. Wow. They had a little tension there. See, Asajj Ventress getting romantic with Obi-Wan makes sense to me. Yeah. Because they, they were building up this kind of Sam and Diane thing. But, like, Quinlan Voss just out of nowhere? Anyway, Anyways. whatever. <laughs> like, like I said, it's not canon for me. Like, to me, the canon of Asajj Ventress stops with her last appearance on Clone Wars. Fair enough. But Fair enough. Here's a tough question. Would you guys like the sequel trilogy if George Lucas made it the way Disney made the sequel trilogy? No. First of all, that's a very good question. Sure. That's a, ve that's a very, very good question. And I might not like it, but I would respect I'd it I'd accept it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's also, he question. wouldn't make it like that. I mean, why? he didn't show up to the premiere for eight or nine. I mean, right. what more... Can be said about that there's literally nothing but if, but if you do the thought experiment and george lucas made that and slaved over it and and put that together and it was the same exact three movies mm -hmm. i would respect them more and look at them in a different light it's a fair question it's a good question it's a great question yeah but my answer still stands is that i it wouldn't feel right to me but yeah. also he wouldn't he would never do that so but a good, right. good question. Makes you think, for sure. Reason why they're shy. They don't know what to do after the saga ended. Star Wars Theory and Dave Filoni for president and vice president of Lucasfilm. Dude, I, I'm not qualified to be a president or anything, but uh, if you hand me the keys, don't pay me any money. I'll give you guys millions of ideas because I know it works. Just saying. I just want to see Star Wars succeed, and I don't. I, I don't feel like it is. All that much right now. It's like it's like teetering. It's like we got Mando two. Okay, great, yay! We got Lego Star Wars game coming out. Yay! But what else am I looking forward to here? So far, the track record hasn't been all that great. I mean, if it was, we wouldn't be in the case the scenario we are now. I've been running D and D campaigns for a while. We should make a Star Wars D and D to pass the time. <laughs> I've never First of all, there is there is a Star Wars D and D. It's called Star Wars: The Role Playing Game. And it is the birth of the Star Wars Expanded Universe. You should definitely look into it. The first time kyber crystals are ever discussed. The first time so many things that we take for granted in Star as part of Star Wars lore were ever introduced was in the role-playing game by SSI. You should definitely, definitely, definitely look into it. Okay. I will. I mean, for, for, the, for the person who wrote oh, the... Oh, uh, that sounds interesting to me. I want to do that. Oh, yeah. It, it literally is the first real expansion of the Star Wars universe all stems from the Star Wars role-playing game. Scott says, John Favreau to Kathleen Kennedy. I am vengeance. Nice. No, you can't see me. So you probably didn't get that, but I put the Batman cowl on my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was a cool. That was a cool trailer. I've seen it like three times. It was good, man. It's when he beats the crap out of that dude. Jesus. And the other guy had like an yeah. iPhone. It was really funny. I was like, what the hell? Are these thugs. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Mando season two is gonna kick ass because you have six to seven Star Wars fans directing it. It's true. That's all we need. Josh Lowe is a new member. Thank you, Darth Revan says greetings from the dark side. Good people, greetings, man. So as we know, the sequels weren't that great story-wise, but what I believe theater lacked in story, they succeeded with entertainment. Do you agree? 
Mm. No, because I wasn't really entertained. With with episode nine, I was entertained when I was in the theater. It was a fun time. I was with my buddies. You know, it was hype sesh. Uh, we were having popcorn. It was great. You know, we went in our Jedi robes and our lightsabers. We were we were geeking out. We were nerding out hard. I'd say that the whole part of it was entertaining. But I mean, you're going to a Star Wars movie. It's not going to be boring, you know. But as for watching episode eight, I was not entertained. I was trying to figure out where the story was going. I was the first one in the theater and the first one to leave my seat. The dudes yeah. started coming in. Clean, they were cleaning because my mind, I was just sitting there and I'm like, how the hell did this just, who approved this? Are you not entertained? And I, I, I spent so long trying to come up with theories that like made sense for my own self. <laughs> That's why I pumped out so many videos after The Last Jedi came out because I was like, they just can't be. It's just not possible. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, it was so. But that's why that's because it was made by someone who didn't understand Star Wars, didn't do their homework. What's your favorite cheese? Here we go again with the cheese question. I like brie. Thanks for stealing my question, Wesley Snipes. God damn it. Monster. I'm into monster. I think I've said that before too. I like monster. What's monster? <laughs> I like monster monster cheese. I like monster cheese. What is that? It's like um, it's like a cheese, you know. It's good for sandwiches, though. What kind it of cheese? Melts is monster really cheese. Good. It's a cheese. It, like it melts really nice, you know. Oh, it's really? a cow cheese, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you think we'll see more action or animation? Um, I think we'll see a lot of both. I think right now we're gonna see a lot more animation, though. I just feel like it's probably easier to make with with everything going on. Uh, Dan, thank you. And uh, what have I done? That's a nice name. I like the profile pic. What's up, boys? Happy to celebrate another Monday together. Absolutely glad to have you here. Wanted to know your opinions in contrast on the contrast between Matt Lanter's warm, brotherly portrayal of Anakin versus Hayden Christensen's more monotone portrayal. Look, they're both good. And, Mark, I'd love to hear your opinion, too. But I think they're both good. They both have their place. Usually animations are a little more warm, fun, quote-unquote, for kids. And so he did a great job there, but... You can't be Anakin's portrayal of Hayden Christensen's portrayal of Anakin because that is the true Anakin that was directed primarily by George Lucas for his movie. And that is who Anakin really is. And a lot of people don't understand, which I'd love to make more of a video uh, covering why Hayden acted the way he did. I mean, look, you got a guy that's separated from his mother. The only father figure in his life is dead. His wife is, he's having these terrors of his wife dying. His mother dies. I mean, all because he wasn't powerful to save either of them. And he's only got one faction to blame. That's the Jedi. Yeah. Obviously, all, he's going to be pissed off and monotone and always confused. Of like, He's just doing what he's told. Yeah, I, um, oh, my stream went out. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, my stream went out there for a second. Um, so first of all, I, I really like the question, um, the way that it was phrased, because um, Anakin in the Clone Wars is kind of like the sort of big brother, um, and he's a different type of character. Hold on, yeah, it looks like it, it froze for some reason. Hold on, let me let me close it and open it again, see if that does anything. Oh, it seems to be going fine now. Oh, well. Yeah. But, and I agree with you, the, the Anakin in the movies is the true Anakin. Because if you think about Anakin, Anakin, and this is why I think it was so important to Lucas to have the whole thing about him being discovered when he was a toddler or, or like a really young child. Yeah. Is that Anakin is kind of like the equivalent of like a child actor. You know, and like, you know, child actors always kind of grow up to be disturbed. A little weird. You know, with very, yeah. yeah, with very few exceptions, somebody that has that much attention. And power. At that early, yeah, and power at that early an age grows up to be a little bit awkward. Yeah. And, and I think that Hayden Christensen keeps that awkwardness perfectly throughout the entire film until he embraces the dark side 
and then he finds a comfortable new skin yeah. that he can live inside of. Yeah. And that and that to me is why Anakin is perfect in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Um, and the Anakin in Clone Wars is a different Anakin, but you also got to remember that Anakin is between episodes two and three. Um, but it's a different Anakin. It is a different Anakin. He's 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 more he's more likable. He's not as awkward, mm-hmm. you know. But I like the awkward nature of Anakin. Yeah, because it's it's very real to what the character's supposed to be like. Well, and Hayden Christensen, which you guys have been blowing up those those behind the scenes videos. I, I'm I'm happy that you enjoy them. Um, the thing that Hayden said was he wanted to keep turning up the dark side. But George kept pulling him back and saying, no, 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 you know, not yet, not yet, not yet. But in episode three, he was ready to unleash that, you know, from the get-go. So you can see why he was so monotone, even for that reason, because George's directing told him, no, like, keep pulling it back. Like, you're not there yet. But, like, as much as I love Anakin in the Clone Wars, you never have a scene that touches me as much as when Anakin tells Obi-Wan... He's like, hey, no more loose wire jokes. Yeah. You know, like that little insight between Anakin and Obi-Wan about don't make fun of R2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like you do get a little bit of that big brother thing there. Yeah. But it's subtle. It's not like in your face over seven seasons yeah. of development. You yeah. know, it's just it's more subtle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Um. All right. So yeah, get, we've been going for seventy-five minutes, but keep going. Just reading the last few few soups here. Hey, Mark and Theory, have you guys heard that Anakin say Pad may help me just before his mask goes over his face and became? Bro, I was the first one on YouTube to make that video. I'm gonna pioneer that. I want my trophy. Okay, I was the first one to make that video and cover that, as well as the first one to make the video where he says, "Master, help me" when he's getting burned up. So yes. I have seen that, Mark. Did you know about that? I'm gonna be a little bit embarrassed here to say I did not know about that. Okay. Yeah. Does he, does he actually say that? Yeah, I'm gonna send you my video. Alright. It's pretty cool. And I've seen Revenge of the Sith countless times. I mean, I saw it not too long ago. No. Yeah, well, I don't remember that. That's what happens is uh, Papa Theory makes these videos and then they just get regurgitated with all these uh, Instagrammers and such. And no one gets no no one gets the true credit. I want my award, right? I want to hang it on the wall. I've been subbed since your what if Obi Wan took the Death Sticks vid. Can't believe it's been three years. May the force be with you and have a great day. Thanks, Tan T four. Appreciate it, buddy. It's been four years. <laughs> Has it been four years? Yeah, it's been four years. Yeah, we're over four years now on the channel. Uh, thanks to you guys. Star Wars is a story about a father and a son, family growth as a father. As a father, it is a greater bridge for bonding. And Wesley Snipes becomes a new member. My guy. Yeah, Star Wars is all about family. And George said it was a space drama about family. But a dysfunctional family. Mark, since you have worked at Rockstar, do you think it would be amazing if Disney left a Star Wars game with them? Uh, Star Wars, uh, first of all, yes. It would be incredible, but Rockstar would never do it. Why? Because they wouldn't want to touch that? Yeah, when I worked at Star Wars, this is a true story. Rockstar? Um, yeah, yeah, when, when I worked at Rockstar, J.J. Abrams came to pitch us on a uh, game for Alias. So back in the day, before J.J. Abrams was J.J. Abrams, he created and worked on a television show called Alias with Jennifer Gardner as the lead. I remember this, yeah. And J.J. Um, Abrams actually came to pitch us on a video game for alias and i was in the meeting with him that's like a little bit of rock star knowledge that nobody that's knows so about. cool i didn't know you met him what yeah. the hell? oh i've met jj a few times um but this was meeting jj before he was jj yeah so it was like he was, he was jay trying, <laughs> he was trying to yeah yeah he was just jay he was trying to sell me on alias this brand new show that he had just sold um, to try to make a video game out of it. That's cool. So, yeah, I guess they wouldn't do that. Well, do it, my boy. Thank you, Wesley. Thank you for both keeping the Star Wars community alive and positive for anyone who doesn't want to see or hear clout. Uh, needed this after a long week last week. Hope you have a great week this week. 
Thank you, Calista. It's a very nice message, and thank you for the 15 bucks. Uh, it's going towards the next season, which I've written the fir- uh, I've written episode one and three, and now we're going to go back and uh, I'm going to write episode two for Once Upon a Theory. I hope you guys will enjoy it. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be just for join members for the first bit. I know I said that last time, but the four-year anniversary came up, so I, I released it. Would Ahsoka recognize Sebastian Shaw's Anakin? Um, I don't think that's a question I could answer. I don't, I mean, yeah, it's Vader. I mean, it's Anakin at the end of the day. She would recognize his force energy, I guess. Would you guys be up for a day where you play some Star Wars The Old Republic with some fans? Love you guys and the content. You are both defined, you're both defined to bring balance to the free, to the fandom. I'm down for that, Mark. I'm down for it, but my character, like I have max level characters. You you only have starter characters, so I don't know how we would play together. You just join um, in. Yeah, but like I, I'm I'll not going backwards. Up. Maybe I'll yeah, just I'm rank not, up. I'm not going backwards. So in just that start game, a new account. Nah, I've already done that. I've already done that. You stickler, man. Come on. I'll play like I'll play the end game content, and there is a new expansion that I haven't checked out. Um, Star Wars: The Old Republic is a cool game. It gets extremely repetitive in terms of the game mechanics. Mm. It is cool, but it's kind of, I think, lived out its heyday. I'd, I'd still think, look, I'd still play Galaxies with you. I think you still need to do that one day. Well, I got a new uh, computer now, so I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now you don't have any excuses. No, I have nothing. But, uh, but um, yeah, look, I'm down to play Old Republic. You know, I, I, I have it. I'm ready to fire it up. And I'm, you know, and I definitely want to play Star Wars Galaxies with you, because um, I definitely want to show you the galaxy. Okay, I'm down. Um, would you guys? Uh, the team up fight was super delayed. Daisy and Adam Driver weren't on time, and that's why there's a lot of random spinning and posing. Uh, so the stunt actors were doing a really good job in the Praetorian guard suits. You're saying? Hey guys, longtime viewer, theory knows. What up, Lucky Dog Gaming? Glad to see you, buddy. What did you think of DC fandom and what it says for the future of the online Comic-Cons? I think online Comic-Cons are going to become a regular thing for when we can't all meet up. Um, I think even doing like a, a $5 entry fee is fine if they make it even more grand and you know give us something a little more special. If you want to see what I thought about it, go to my gaming channel, Theories Arcade Games, where I did my extensive review, 40-minute review, and live reaction of all the stuff that came out, um, if you haven't seen it already. The Lego releases on the 27th for 40 bucks. Well, I'm definitely going to be getting it and playing it with copyright music because I want you guys to have fun. And it's more interesting like that. For me, the worst part about episode 9 was when Ray hears forced voices scenes. Really, that was my favorite. I'd rather Yoda, Obi-Wan, Anakin appear. Well, of course, I'd rather them appear. But of the entire movie, I thought that was so cool that they brought back at least some form of the prequels characters, at least in some way. Would have been nice to have seen them or have a little more incorporation, but it is what it is. And there was a really good fan edit. Yeah. Thanks, Oscar. Charlie says, speaking of Anakin to fight people, it'd be cool to see Anakin versus Syndralic, the swordsman trailer for the young, the younglings. He was a swordsman trailer for everybody. He was a master swordsman, resembling some sort of master versus apprentice or wise upperclassman um, versus the learner. Yeah, we also got to see that in the game where he killed Syndralic through the shoulder. Harrison Ford is older than Ian. That's crazy. I, is he? Is that true? Uh, no, man. I think Ian's like 70-something now, right? Is he? No. I hope Theory don't just adapt Kotor for live action. Oh, I, th- I hope they don't just adapt Kotor for live action. They should make new stories and draw some aspects from EU. Even the old EU is contradictory. No, that's what they're doing, I think, with High Republic. I don't know. I hate sand. Asajj died. Oh, no, he says I hate that Asajj died. Me too. Yeah, me too. I think I just saw the sand in your background and I got confused. Dark Disciple is a great read, just a bad ending. It says Shards of the Past was made by Lucas. <laughs> You mentioned before making a cartoon-like film for the Episode Nine alternate script. Is that still a possibility? Not for me. It's too expensive. Mark, are you still down to do that? To do what? Make a cartoon adaptation of Episode Nine's Colin Trevorrow 
uh, script? Um, I think there'd be a lot of money invested into somebody else's vision mm -hmm. where I'm a lot more interested in investing in my own vision. Um, but here I am thinking about like, if I were to make a little fan film about what happens in the Jedi temple, yeah, that's like a completely brand new interpretation, you know? Yeah. If I were to make, um, the, uh, star Wars video game that we've been talking about maybe doing, I've been really like, wanting would, to move on that, by the way. I've really been that would be a brand new thing, you know, like, yeah. um, doing call and script. I'm not sure. There's actually somebody who's a fan of the show and a listener of rule of two made a wonderful comic book version of the script that he's been releasing online. You guys should check that out. Cause he did a very nice job with it. Really? Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, speak, talking about that game, dude, I, we need to talk about that off camera, I guess, because I want to, I want to, I want to move on this. Yeah. <sighs> Last thing, Star Wars is like politics. No matter what people always disagree and take it out on the actors, politicians. My bad. Just wanted to keep the cheese fresh. <laughs> but do you think episode nine was entertaining? Yeah. Well, I was sitting there. I was entertained. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's Star Wars. You got the music. You got, I mean, how could you not be entertained? No worries, says Captain Screech. Wesley says, I equate the character change in Anakin from the Clone Wars to Revenge of the Sith, the dark side encompassing him, but it's fast like a drug. It is fast. Well, at that point, he was just, you know, fed up. Padme, Leia, Rey, you have to marry one, friend one, and force choke one. <laughs> God. I'm not answering I'm not, that. I'm not answering that. I'm not that. answering that, dude. What's the deal about no Star Wars online thing? Yeah, I mean, I was hoping that there was going to be an online celebration, but I guess not. Yep, there is no online celebration. Leslie says, Anakin wanting to leave the Order when he was 12 because his future was decided for him makes his turn to the dark side more believable to me. Yeah, like in that comic where he handed Obi-Wan his lightsaber. And then obviously, you know, he talked him out of it and everything. I will ask your favorite cheese until I'm out of money. Hey, keep asking, man. Keep asking. It, Look, I like, Mon I like Monster and I like goat cheese. I think I've said it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Brie. It's good. It's nice, spreadable. What crossover would you like to see, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings? Uh, I just want to see a good Star Wars movie. That's all. Yeah, no need for crossover. I don't need a cross let's see. We, like, <laughs> we we haven't mastered our own realm. Let's yeah. let's master our own realm first. I think Mando is leading the way with that, and I think I, I cannot wait for season two. I think it's amazing. How do I write? And that's only because of the people behind it. You know, you got the right people behind something, it's going to be good. How do I write a good conclusion paragraph? I don't know, dude. That's, what the <laughs> hell? It's a good question, but it's, just it's a tough eight, question. Some eight, yeah, some ate everything. It's the wrong place for that. Some ate everything, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Figure it out. Um, Ian is seventy six. Harrison is seventy eight. That's crazy. Wow. That is crazy. That is crazy. Well, that's the end of the super chats. Uh, gone eighty minutes on this one. Mark. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think this might be our record. I think this might be our longest rule of it two. It might ever. be our longest rule of two. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I had look, fun. it's good to it's good to chat with you guys. It's good to hang out with the with the army, and um, yeah, man, maybe next week we should play a little Star Wars games. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm down with it. Let's do it. All right, cool. maybe a little Empire at War. It'd be fun. Look, let's play either Sotor or Galaxies. Let's keep it simple. Let's not start introducing Empire at War. Because right, Sotor or Galaxies, we can get people in there with us. Um, it's a sandbox type environment. We can true. have some fun with that. True. Okay, I'm down. All right, fine. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much, Jedi and Sith, Mandalorians, everything else in between. We love you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the Super Chats. We will see you next week. And until then, remember, rise, my friends. The Fast Order! <laughs> I'll end it with that this week.